right, I'm going to talk about the plant based meat scam. Boy, I tell you, nothing will jack up my blood pressure than this topic because it's utterly ridiculous telling people that plant based meats are healthy, they're clean, they're good for the environment. But the actual real meat is unhealthy, not just for your body, but for the environment. It's a complete lie. In fact, meat, especially red meat, is one of the most healing things that you can eat. It has not just huge amounts of protein, B vitamins, iron, selenium, zinc, and many other things. I mean, what does plant-based meat have? Let's just take the Impossible Burger, sponsored by Bill Gates. First of all, they take genetically modified yeast. And what this yeast is going to do, it's going to make a version of a blood protein heme, okay? And it's going to make it from soy. And it's classified as a color additive. That's not the only thing in the Impossible Burger. You have soy oil, which they use hexane, that's a solvent, corn oil, modified food starch, cultured dextrose, that's synthetic sugar, soy protein isolates, and methyl cellulose. What is in a Impossible Burger that even comes close in comparison with the nutrition in red meat. To my knowledge, I haven't seen any study on their testing for this GMO heme. I mean, they're putting this out in the marketplace without any testing. Now, what about um, the safety studies, right? There's this classification called GROSS, generally recognized as safe. I mean, the company applied for GROSS in 2000, I think it was in 15, they got denied. And so they reapplied in 2017. And instead of doing the 90-day safety testing, their company did the 28-day test. The company themselves stated their own safety studies, right? This is a loophole with this gross certification. And if I'm not mistaken, I only saw that they did this on 10 females and 10 male rats. I mean, is that a big enough sample study to test this out on? And of course, it was considered safe. But if you look a little deeper, you find some interesting data. There was weight loss with the rats. There was some type of um, blood chemistry disorder, reproductive changes in the uterus. Yet they said there was no adverse effects. Incredible. So now let's switch to the environment. Let's talk about why beef is so bad for the environment. It requires so much water, so many resources for beef. But if you really read between the lines, the water that they're calculating they're adding into this equation rainwater. So if you really want to compare this, okay, apples to apples, 70% of the freshwater reserves are for irrigating crops. And 53% of that is for rice, wheat, and cotton. And if you compare that to beef, beef uses less actual freshwater. If we just subtract the rain, okay, because that's in addition to the freshwater. I mean, just take a look at California almonds, right? use up 10 times the fresh water than cattle. Yet we're not concerned about these California almonds, are we? It's like, oh, those are healthy. And this next thing is very interesting too, as far as livestock consuming the resources. 85% of livestock resources are using non-human edible material. Like for example, field corn. Humans won't eat that. Also, like beet pulp, the entire corn stalk, they can eat that, the whole soybean plant itself. And they can turn all this non-edible material that humans can't eat into amazing protein and dairy that we can eat. So in reality, only 16% of crops that we eat are fed to cattle. No one's really going after the chickens and pigs right now. It's mainly the cows. And so if we look at the growing crops in general, right, for every 100 pounds of crops that we grow, there's about 37 pounds of inedible byproducts that are created from that, which could be fed to the cows. But if we look at the actual grain that humans eat, really it only takes 2.8 kilograms to make one pound of beef. And it even takes like 3.2 grams of this grain to feed the uh, chickens and the pigs. If we actually replace the cows just with plants, okay, and we all went vegetarian, about two-thirds of that land that we use would be unusable because we can't grow 
certain foods on certain terrain because it has too much rock or the, there's cliffs that you can't make a garden on or you can't farm on or the soil's too rough. Well, guess what? Cows can live on that terrain. They can eat not just grass, but they can eat even weeds. I have a bunch of cows and they eat weeds all day long on the land that people grow crops on is from animal fertilizer, right? If we get rid of the animals, where we're going to get the fertilizer. Now let's talk about this, uh, the cow burps, right? Methane. So roughly the greenhouse uh, gas emissions are about like 10% methane. And the accumulation of all the amount of methane from burps from all livestock is really only about 2.7% of the total. That's not a lot of methane. The grass or the plants eat or consume carbon dioxide that goes into the earth, stored as carbon. The livestock consumes the plant, eats the carbohydrate, gets the carbon, okay? Makes methane, the methane goes into the atmosphere, hangs out for about 10 years, then turns into water and CO2, which then cycles through the grass, the plants, the trees, and this whole cycle starts over and over again. So when you really look at the big picture, the livestock is not adding any more carbon to the atmosphere. All it's acting as is a recycler of the carbon through this whole cycle chain. That's the name of this video, Plant-Based Meat Scam. Now, if you have not seen my video on the healthiest food in the world that you can eat to heal your body, I put it right here. Check this out.